why hi why hi there it's uncle ron and i didn't get a thought-provoking question this week from a certain viewer of mine so i'm going to comment on something that always pops up when you're reading either the message boards on delphi or our group on facebook or sports simulations and replays on facebook or or other places and it's the proverbial why do you do as played replays now for those of you just kind of swooping in and having no idea what I'm talking about. And as played, replay is, let's say with a, we'll do baseball as an example, you do a project where you use the real lineups for every game that you play. And it just, for a lot of different reasons, makes things easier. And so it, if you, let's say you're playing the games of, of September 1st, 1984, then you are using the exact lineups that they used on 1984. Relief pitchers, pinch hitters, different story. Some people do are, are that precise. I've never been that precise. So why do I do it? What what advantages do I think per, that an as-played re replay provides me as opposed to something else? If I was doing a single-team replay, I probably would not do as-played just because after the first couple of weeks of the season, I know what direction that, you know, where, what the cards are, how good they are, where their strengths are, where their weaknesses are, what needs to be improved. It, it also provides a challenge. I'm also in full control of the bullpen if I'm playing a single team over and over and over again in, in, in baseball. So I know how much they're being used. I know how little they're being used. And I, although I don't, strictly adhere to usage limits i'm also not going to be doing 300 percent for for any one given player if the player is only has 100 innings and i'm not going to throw him 250 uh if, if he's really good so the for a single team replay you tend to use your own thing i know that people such as our red sox fan use a modified as played replay as, with a single team as the lineups, the players may be there, but he will and others will adjust the lineups accordingly. So if you're number three hitters in a massive slump, you can move them up or down the lineup there. I'm not sure what he does with, with pitchers and such like that. And it's kind of hard if you're going to do any sort of modified as played replay not to use the starting pitchers because they're the ones that are going to be freshest. The bullpen's always, you know, a little bit hair a little bit there for taste but if you're using somebody especially in, the, in a game system that uses fatigue you might only have that person or one other per pitcher ready to go on a given day and there's no guarantee that pitcher is going to be any better than the one you're replacing okay so why do i use as played well i look at my role uh, on the full season projects as a broadcaster as opposed to a manager. I try to be as consistent as I can be. Action PC, of course, being what I use for that. And if I, on an average, I'm doing three games a week, and I'm not usually doing the same teams more than once a week. This week kind of being the exception. But pretty much the first 24 weeks of the season, I'm not bunching up teams from stream to stream to stream. We'll go back and forth between whatever races that we have. And so there are some teams I might not play at all over the course of a full season. Remember, most seasons there's a, anywhere between 2,130 games and 2,430 games, and I'm playing 90 or 95, maybe 100. So I'm only playing, what is that, about 4% of the season in total. But they're the most meaningful games that, that I try to get on the channel. Um, so you aren't going to get a lot of games with bad teams unless they're playing someone late in the season in a game that matters. Uh, so one of the reasons why I do as played is I want it all to be fair. I don't necessarily want to trust the computer's AI to create good lineups to play. That's not a knock against the game. It's just, look, if you used A, B, and C, and A, B, and C are available... Why not go with the lineups that they got? I'm not. It, let's just take a team like the '85 Cardinals. I might have played them 30 times in the regular season of the '90. Actually, probably not even that much. That race was pretty much over early. 
So let's say I play this six or seven times. Well, I don't want to go through and redo everything just to accommodate if someone's slumping in the two hole and they should be batting eighth and blah, 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 blah. I'm parachuting in, doing the game, trying to run the bullpen the best that I can based on what's happened the last four or five days. And so it just keeps it fair for everybody. So let's say if the Seattle Mariners are bad in a given year, look, they're not going to get much improvement from, from me, and I don't really want to play around with all that. So, A, it's fair. B, I think it does get a good job into getting the usage numbers close to right. Again, I'm not 100% with that. I don't want to overuse players, and sometimes you really can't help but underuse players depending on the given situation. But with starting pitching in that, they're going to come close to the real-life at-bats, and if you're looking for a sim that gets you overall – within the ballpark, so to speak, for the numbers that you're looking for, that's the easiest way to do it. Just go with the lineups. Now, there are some, we're talking about Keith Russell, who would only use players for the exact number of at-bats and innings pitched and blah, 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 blah. And I think in his case, he was just trying to get the best stats instead of playing the game. So um, there are disadvantages to using as played. And the examples that come up time and time again, the one that was recently up on Delphi was a case of, I forget what Cardinal season it was, but Murray Dixon was going to get the call to pitch a very important game. And the free player really didn't want to go with Murray Dixon or had questions about it because Murray was not having a great season. And so would, in a game that mattered, I think the case was the game mattered more for the Cardinals and it did in real life. And this happens too because not every replay is going to come out exactly. What do you do in a situation when a team is fighting for a spot and you've either got some sort of September call-up or someone like Dixon who uh, having a rough year uh, but has to pitch the wheel a game of his life to keep it in the race. And in the four full season uh, as played partial you know seasons that I've done, I've never changed a lineup. I try my best if there's no lineup to recreate to the best of my ability, but I'm of the opinion that a game in April means just as much as a game in September. And so if you are going to use pitcher X in a game in April or an early season series in May, then he's going to go in September when it counts if that's a name on the list. If you don't disturb it for that, why would you disturb it later? Yes, you can get a different result. And yes, if you're spe- specifically doing a season team and want to win, or single team and want to win, I can understand that. And again, your replay, your rules. There is no wrong way to do it. I'm just going through the process of why I don't change it. Um, so fair, to be fair to all the teams in the replay and to get the usage close to right in and get the desired stats so, so far. So there was a case last year in my 1985 replay in a game that I wasn't going to play that involved the Angels and the Rangers in the last day of the season. Now, in my replay, the Angels won the American League West. The Royals won it in real life. And so on the last day of the season, Mike Witt was the scheduled starter for the California Angels. Now the Angel fans that were watching my stuff were going, no, there's no way you're going to let him go the last game of the season. We want him to go in game one of the playoffs against the Blue Jays. And I overruled that. For whatever reason, he got the start. And since I'm not interfered with anything before, I don't want to start the precedent of going, well, if so-and-so, you know, if you use this instead of that, then maybe a different result could happen. I don't know what reason... I mean, I probably would, if I was an Angel fan too, not want my ace pitcher to start the the last game of the season when he's going to go two days later in the playoffs. Now, as it turned out, I usually go do my playoff rotations on whip. And Witt, it's whip, that's, was third. And so I probably would have used him in game three anyway. I went with... Um, Ron Romanic and Kirk McCaskill. Not necessarily in that order, but they had a better whip than 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 Witt. And so 
that's who I was going to use in those games. And, well, Witt lost both of his starts anyway. He lost game three and he lost game seven. Or, or was on the losing side of the ledger. I'm not sure if he got the... I'd have to look. So, again, it's a case of, for me anyway, no. We played 162 regular season games or 2,429 games playing one way just because it's a weird kind of move to do that. I'm not changing it just because logic tells me it should be changed. If you're going to do as played for part of the season, you know, if that's your objective going into it, then you use it for the whole way. Now, if you tell yourself that I'm going to go as played till September 1st and then mix and match and do whatever, that's fine. I just do it to be consistent. Just like even if the I'm doing a Yankee game and the Yankees are home, I always manage the home team. Again, I try to be fair unless it's the Red Sox, and then the Red Sox will lose for me when I manage them. But again, it's all trying to be equitable and fair. But remember, I'm coming into this as the role of a broadcaster and not necessarily a manager. I really don't care who wins. I want the games to be good. I want to have a good time while I'm playing them. I want to be surprised. But as far as you know, putting my thumb on the scale, the best way not to do that is just to let it roll from however it was in real life. And if you got a team that suddenly is in a race that they weren't in and are going with, you know, your Joe Splatniks and stuff like that, look, they got that far, maybe a couple, his last start beforehand when they weren't featured on the stream or whatever. I, I, I'm not going to go and play with lineups for eight or nine different teams. We're just going to let it ride. So that's how I do it. And, but again, the big disadvantages of, what happens, as we said, do you make that change? I think if you were doing a California Angels replay from 1985 and you'd clinch the division, there is no way in purgatory you're using Mike Witt the last game of the season against Texas. But you've played with a team all year, and I think that also gives you a huge advantage against a computer or against playing other teams if it's a pure card and dice game that you're playing because you know, as I said earlier, you know the strengths, you know the weaknesses, and you know what works, which is why team, if you most people who do single-team replays of a team tend to do better than the real-life records unless the real team was just fantastic because you're going to pick up on things that the AI isn't necessarily going to understand or know what needs to change. That's just you and your knowledge of, you know, maybe it's a team you're playing that from when you were 14 years old or something you've gone to learn or whatever from that, that you're just going to get better as time goes on because you're going to learn learn the system and learn the game, and you're going to be better for it. Um, if you start a project, let's say, okay, I'm going to go with as played until the All-Star break or September 1st or the last week of the season, I, as long as you're consistent about what you do, great. I, I, I think for me, that is the key. Just be consistent in what you do. And so if you go in and, and make those changes, fine. If you don't, fine. And I, I so I guess that's just my two or three cents worth there. So again, there is no wrong way to play. But the strengths of, to recap, the strengths of an as played replay, you get usage, right? You probably get the results within reason that kind of come closest to real life if that's what you're after. And you could see from the stats on a re as played replay, uh, you know, what, was the manager right when he did it? Was he wrong when he did it? Um, so those pretty much are there. A lot of the work is done for you. You don't have to do a lot of research. You fill out the lineups and you go. And for me, I, I don't use same day relief pictures anyway. I know that some people that do. You know, once the rubber band is taken off the virtual cards, it's all fiction anyway. So, and the advantages of not doing as played is, look, you're the manager. If if someone's hitting 150 with 48 strikeouts and they kept getting shoved into the, the cleanup spot or the number three spot, don't use them. Why would you use them? You're the manager. You're the one making that decision. There is no wrong way to do it. Can you, as for, for those of you who want to change history... 
that's probably the way to go. But some playoff spots, especially now, are decided by one or two games. You pick up that win in May or June that you didn't get, that, that might be the only difference that you, that you needed to win the championship. So my playoffs, I go... The other reason why I do a lot of ads played, especially late in the season, is it gives me a good idea of what the if the team that did not make the playoffs in real life made the playoffs, what lineup would he have used? By playing those lineups down the stretch, if you got a four-game set and we're streaming all four because that's the division, yeah, I want to know who he would use in any given situation. And how would you deal with a pitching rotation? The Witt example, I think, is pretty extreme. Most teams who have things in control the last week of the season are setting things up for the race to go games 1, 4, and 7, depending on the year, or 3 and 7 today, or 1 and 5 in today's version of, of the LDS, or League Divisional Series. So that that's planning on the manager's part. So, again, there really is no wrong way to play, but because... I parachute in, it's just easier for me to go as played to do that and let the computer do the hard work of that, do my game, figure out what's go- where I'm going next with that, parachute in, do that game, and, and play tic-tac-toe until we get down to brass tacks. And again, I just do it for consistency. So whatever you decide to do is there, but I would kind of caution you or urge you, whatever it is you decide to do, just be consistent with how you play. There is no wrong way to play, but I think the more consistent you are in how you set up a replay, whether it's as played or you pick the lineups or modified, you know, real life rosters on the day, but you're picking out there, just what, what's good for the goose, I think is good for the gander. What you do in April, personally, I think you should do in September. But I might be wrong. If you'd like to ask a thought provoking question, just put it in the comments. And next week, If there's one I like, I'll do another video. Until then, have a good one, everybody. So long.